Hey everyone, and welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. We're having some fun, let's dive right back into it. So I'm here in my Kali Linux virtual machine. I have a text editor open as long as, as well as a terminal for me to be able to hack from, and I also have the Pico CTF game board. So let's keep cruising. We're now moving into a cryptography category challenge called Rail Fence for 100 points, and it says a type of transposition cipher is the Rail Fence cipher, which is described here. Here. Okay, we have a looks like a page we could open. Here's one such cipher encrypted using the rail fence with four rails. Can you decrypt it? You can download the message here. Let's go ahead and do that. And we want to put the decoded message in the Pico CTF flag format. Well, let's go ahead and check out this page. The rail fence cipher looks like I'm just over here on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's also a zigzag cipher, apparently. Form of classical transposition cipher. It derives its name from the manner in which the encryption is performed. Ooh, okay. Plain text is written downwards and diagonally on successive rails of an imaginary fence, and then moving up when the bottom rail is reached, down again when the top rail is reached. Okay, so it is literally a zigzag. For example, to encrypt the message we are discovered run at once with three rails, it's kind of bouncing back and forth diagonally. And there we go. Note that the spaces and punctuation are omitted, then read the text horizontally to get the cipher text. Ooh, W-E-C-R-U-O. So... We're cruo or just, yeah, that. <laughs> and that's how it's done. You decrypt it by taking the number of rails and then kind of working backwards in a weird way, right? If you were able to carve this out, you could follow that path diagonally and bring it all together. They do some silly math shenanigans that I'm not smart on and I don't pretend to know and nor do I honestly really care all that much because, hey, this is gonna end up being an algorithm we could probably take care of and determine going to be tons of tools and tons of things that we would be able to use with this. Uh, let's grab into the cryptography category. Let's go ahead and make the rail fence folder. Um, and I will go back and actually grab the downloaded file. Uh, let's w get that after I move into that rail fence directory. Nice and easy here. We have the message.txt, which looks like this. Certainly a disaster. Um, but I guess it is the message. Maybe the colon indicates, hey, this is your message. We could, kind of just as I alluded to, probably go find some silly, dumb online tools that'll help do that for us. Let me look for a rail fence cipher decoder out on the internet. Decode FR, of course, has one. They have something for like practically everything. Uh, let's try and just slap it in. We could use automatic decryption and try and see if it could figure it out. Uh, it looks like the flags etc. Maybe there for number four is trying to get it right. Um, but that still has some oddities to it. It did tell us that four was the answer, right? Let's try and decrypt real fence. Yeah, here we go. The flags. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly right. Something feels like it's off there. Are we supposed to start at an offset? Can you decrypt it? Rail fence with four rails. Mm. Is there more to it or am I just doing something wrong? Am I not reading this as the actual answer? How do we started from bottom left? Nope. That's still kind of wonky. Use an initial offset. We could supply one like two. No, that still makes a complete mess. Four gets it right just about, though. Let's check out some other tools. There's nothing wrong with that. We have uh, plenty of tools in our toolbox. We could try and see what's going on. If I were to have this decrypt, I'll make sure to click on that button here. Let's decrypt and paste this in. Can I please decrypt that? No. Oh, it needs to know the number of rails. Four. There we go. Uh, not sure why... Oh, decode FR probably removed all the space characters. I think that's where it went wrong. <laughs> I still have a whole ton of tabs open for Morse code in that previous challenge. So forgive me on that one. But that gets the job done here for us. Where does the fence begin and end is how we could make sense of it. And honestly, just kind of keeping track of all this here in Wikipedia. I hope this idea makes sense to you, but I'll admit this is something you could probably just kind of hit the I believe button on. And if you wanted to, you could grab some Python code to do a rail fence cipher. So you don't need to repeatedly go, hey, 
grab this off the internet. Uh, Geeks for Geeks, I guess, has another good example, kind of as we saw for the specific, excuse me, um, Morse code rendition. So if it gave us some code, hey, hippity hoppity, your code's my property now. Um, <laughs> toggle over to the Python 3.1 and let's copy this whole thing here. Let's see if we can make this work nice and easy for us. Uh, they have this all used, so let's go play with it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up creating like, a, hey, I guess a solve.py. Or I guess my own get flag.python file here. And I want to give it a shebang line at the very, very top. So I'm going to specify user bin environment python3. We have encrypt rail fence and decrypt rail fence as functions that we can use. Uh, so what we could end up doing is going down here and actually specifying, okay, the number of rails that are used. We know that's four given, or if we wanted to, we could just loop through it and have it try and brute force things for us. But hey, let's grab our message and probably copy and paste that in. Super duper easy. I'll slap that into one of the lines here. And I'll change that three to a four. And trying to run this code, let's see how this looks. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, realistically, we want to be able to carve out this portion of it. So what I'll do in Python is probably just split this and get the very, very last entrance and then mm, wrap that in our Pico CTF structure. We could do that. Let's say message equals all this. And let's print out um, flag portion save a, a variable as our message split which will by default split by spaces and then we can index it because it is going to be an iterable thing like a list it is a list that's returned out from that let's grab the negative one index so i work backwards and i work from the offset that says hey yeah i want this to be our end word in a weird way now we could go ahead and print out pico ctf with the curly braces to represent the flag format. And I will use a string specifier with the percent sign to just slap in the flag portion like that. Does that make sense? Does that kind of work for us? Let's run this code here. I hit control B on my keyboard and there we go. That is our flag, Pico CTF. Where does the fence begin and end? And now we've got this added to our toolkit. Maybe you could just keep track of that and you've got code you could use for encrypting and decrypting the rail fence cipher. Just grabbed it. Hey, someone else, someone else has already done all the hard work, right? There we go. 100 points, and that challenge is done and over with. Kind of simple, kind of small, but still good to do. Still good learning, still good exposure to new technologies, new cryptography systems, even if they're old classical ciphers. Something that helps get your feet wet and exposed to stuff and capture the flag. Hope you had some fun with this video. If you did, everyone, please do those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe. All those things help the channel grow and uh, I really appreciate it and I love it and I love you. And I say that all the time, but I don't say it enough. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Take care.